All right, so I'm sure that this is on everyone's mind. Is this the start of a bigger sell-off, or are we going to be recovering from today's down day, which there was a lot of blood in the markets? But, you know, it also, the market presented a lot of hope as it bounced up midday there. Now, we're going to be spending a little bit more time on this video because we're going to be getting in depth, and I'm going to provide you with both bullish perspectives here and then also bearish perspectives. And I want you to look at both sides of these coins while you kind of sit on the edge and interpret what it is that you want to do, okay? There's, there's a lot of positive sentiment still out there. This isn't the end, but there's also a lot of bearish sentiment out there saying, oh, you know, this is the top. I'm not calling for either of those. I don't care about predicting. I care about preparing myself for either scenario because if either scenario plays out and you have a game plan and a strategy well, that's going to work better for you. It works better for me. All right, everybody. My name is Michael Silva. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief Show. Like I said, we have some very interesting charts to go over today, some that I haven't shown before. So I'm going to be bringing them on. Let's get into today's episode. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. We're going to just start here with the market dashboard. And, I, and then we're going to, you know, I was thinking, should I just get into the stock market indicators and then break off into the indices to look in certain levels? Maybe we'll do that. I haven't decided yet. I'm on the fly, yo. I'm on the fly. Let's hop into the market dashboard first, though. Let's look at this sea of red. All right. A lot of selling pressure taking place here. A whole almost percent down in the Dow. <laughs> so really, it's not nearly as bad as it was at the very beginning. I mean, just overnight futures, we were down almost 400 points to start the day, or we're just almost 500 points down to start the day in the cash market. Let's take a look here at the the lagger was small caps once again, being completely hammered down 1.24%, which you'll notice though, when we go through these charts, and maybe you've seen them during the trading session, you notice a lot of red to green candles and very strong bounces. Now, bear markets which we're not in one, present those type of, you know, scenarios. And markets are very tricky, all right? So you need to just proceed with caution. But there is, like I said, a uh, strong possibility that we continue to rip higher and we're going to see some bounces here. But we'll get into the charts in a little bit more detail. Um, I just wanted to show, you know, across the board, everything's down in the red. Very, very few stocks were in the green today. Um, let's look at the sectors. All down. All right, real estate. Now, real estate outperformed the S&P 500. It was a top performing sector. This is what we talked about in a few episodes back where we're like looking at the month ahead from a seasonality perspective. What's typically a stronger performer? It's typically real estate. I have a position in some real estate stuff now. It was actually up on the day and then it slightly, slightly reversed towards uh, midday uh, up on the position overall, okay? Then we have a couple to mention utilities and consumer staples. Now, one day doesn't change a trend, all right, but it's something to note that defensive names are coming into play. More on the defensive talk right here, you're looking at the long-term yields, right? So the 30-year, the 10-year, these are the shorter term, but you're, this is not something that you see if, you know, is it, it, what am I trying to say here? The bond market is signaling something and either the bond market's right about something or the stock market's right. And the stock market continues to really drift higher. I mean, we're not far from the all-time high, right? But really since March, we've been heading lower on both the 30 and the 10. And tech has benefited greatly from that. Now, today's session was very low. I mean, the, the TNX, we finished at, where were we closed? At 1.12.88, oh, so 1.28, just under 1.3 in the 10-year yield. Uh, we broke through this flag channel. This is getting a little overextended to the downside. All right. I don't know if it can continue to fall here or if we're going to start to see it bounce. However, when you think about it, what sector, not sec, yeah, I guess sector has been performing the best. And really this right here to me, when you look at, for example, the TLH, I'll get back into the sector thing. This to me, this boom, this is, this is more of a flight to safety. In my opinion, it's getting a little frothy, right? RSI is getting a little bit overbought. We got above the 200-day moving average today. See a little bit of a spike in volume. Typically, when you see this big, strong move and then you see a spike of volume, that could signal a potential top or a turning point 
I've seen that countless times, like a big spike of volume here turned into a turning point, a big spike of volume here turned into a turning point, a big spike of volume here turned into a turning point, here turned into a turning point. This isn't that big of a spike of volume, but it could very well, I mean, relative to the last, you know, month, it is a big spike of volume, all right? And we're at a potential turning point, turning type candle and an overbought. So flight to risk, perhaps we consolidate here a little bit. Perhaps that means the TNX, the 10 year, you know, heads up a little bit, maybe retest the breakdown of this channel, okay? What sector does very good when the 10 year yield has been falling? It's been technology, these monster mega caps, right? Okay, so for example, mid-May, let's look at mid-May right here in the TNX. This topping right here, and we haven't, you know, we've been putting lower highs, lower lows, mid-May. Let me bring up this index. This is called the FANG Plus. It's taking, you know, the, the, the top mega global stocks. And we're looking at Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Alibaba, Baidu, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Twitter. Okay, that's what's in this index. Now, it's not, it's, Microsoft isn't in it, you know. I'm just using this as uh, just a, a gauge. Now, look at mid-May. Boom, right here, mid-May. This has been going straight up, right? If you look at the 10-year, mid-May, it's been going down. It's getting a little bit overextended, right? Well, what's this doing? Well, it came into a supply zone, previous resistance. Somebody could call this a double top. RSI was getting pretty frothy. Price percent oscillator is about to cross over to bearish. It's still well above zero. And we still have a supply zone right around us here too, as it tagged the 20-day moving average today. Okay? So what I'm, what I'm trying to point out here is there's a strong possibility that if this continues to head lower, being these mega cap stocks, these, you know, the, the ones that really have been holding the spy up and the various indices, right? So for example, I mean, Amazon has just been a, just a monster and Apple has been just a monster. So if the 10 year does catch a bid, start rising here, will this continue to sink? And if this continues to sink, will that bring down the indices? Well, I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't see the trade set up right here. I'm not, I, I guess you can say, you know, price is the number one key indicator. Volume's right there second, okay? So you got to follow price. And as it stands right now, we're in an extremely bullish, bullish environment. Sentiment's very extreme, right? So very, very bullish, both price from a price perspective. Um, but there are still warning signs, which means what? It means you got to be freaking careful in this environment. And if you're not, and if you're becoming overconfident and or complacent, I mean, you're not going to call it complacency. You'll probably just think it's confidence, right? Um, I forgot where I was going there, but you just got to be very careful in this environment. I'm going to go into the stock market indicators right now, okay? Because uh, and then we'll roll into the indices to find out, you know, support resistance and some some key levels. Let's hop into the indicators. All right, first one I want to show you is this. This is the NIAD. I've shown this plenty of times. However, it looked a little bit differently probably. This is the advanced decline issues. It's on a cumulative line, so you can just see the trend. The trend's up, right? It moves up, and the S&P 500 goes up. What am I going to point out here? Well, first off, a couple of things. Um, the RSI on this NYSE advanced decline went below 50 today. It's at 48.51. It rarely drops below 50 on the RSI. So I highlighted the times that it does. And the times that it has, it's actually marked, I mean, since September, short-term bottoms. So from a bullish perspective, one could look at this and say, well, shoot, okay, well, every time it comes down to around the 50 rating, that can go a little bit lower but typically, when it gets there, we find these short-term bottoms. And I highlighted that. See? Bottom right here. Boom, it bounced up. We went higher. Bottom right here. Boom, we bounced higher. Bottom. Boom. Bottom. 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 Now, you'd be better off if you waste for the RSI to cross back above 50. But it's something to point out. Uh, another thing to note is we're still above the 50-day moving average and the 200-day. Clearly above the 200-day moving average, too, as well. The Bollinger Bands have been getting very tightly contracted. And that could lead into a Bollinger Band squeeze. I mean, it works with various stocks. It works with indices. So why not apply it to the NYSE advanced decline, right? Uh, I mean, look at how contracted it got here and it broke out to the upside. Boom, moved up to the upside, shot up higher, okay? So we're at the lower range of the Bollinger Band, 
we're you know just now below 50 on the RSI. We're not too far from the 50 day moving average. This to me signals, okay, it's the start of something potentially bigger, or it's now we're gonna see a bounce to potentially new highs. So it's it's take it for what it is. One thing to note is the RSI, you can see a negative divergence playing out now, right? Negative divergence, that wasn't the case on these other times. So that's something new. All right, let's keep moving. This is the NIUD. This is NYSE Advanced Decline Volume. Now we're looking at the volume, okay? You know, how aggressive is the move? Well, there's a couple bullish and bearish things here too as well. So first off, this cumulative line broke down through the 50-day moving average, back-tested it, and then significantly move lower today. All right, down pretty significantly. Now you can see if you just look at the S&P 500 or even the, the, the NYSE, I like to just look at the S&P 500, you can look at either, um, hardly, hardly budged, right? It, it bounced and pretty much down very slightly for the day. You can see that there's been a negative divergence here that's been building and we just saw a little move to the downside. We had the very same similar situation right here um, before the pandemic, where it was a um, negative divergence there too as well. Uh, a couple things though. The RSI is getting oversold, okay? It's now below 30. And typically when you get down to those levels, I highlighted a few, you can see bounces. So for example, this horizontal, sorry, uh, vertical blue line right here, when it came here, that marked the bottom right here on the S&P 500 and we blasted up higher. Same right here. Okay, we blasted up higher. Yeah, it reverted, but we, you know, tagged the bottom. One to thing to note also is the similarities between the RSI both now and leading up to the pandemic. RSI was overbought, right? Then it went down lower. It came up just right above 50 before it started rolling over again. You saw the negative divergence there, and you saw the S&P 500 continue to press to new highs. Okay, S&P 500 continue to press to new highs. RSI got to a little bit frothy over here, dropped down, back tested the RSI and starting to roll back down through that. So is this a start of a stronger breakdown or is this a bounce? I'll leave it up to you to decide, but understand that you can create a strategy for both ways. To me, looking at the price, I'm still bullish. I'm just extremely cautious. So the positions that I'm looking for are long positions unless we, you know, get some crazy gap up then I might look to sell some of my longs into that strength. There's very, there's so many different techniques that you can use in this environment. What I wouldn't do is if the market gaps down 400 points, I wouldn't short into it, right? Because like, for example, today, prove that point. If it gaps down 400 points, and like I even posted this on the Discord, I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if the indices catch a bit here. It, it makes sense. I mean, the, it's, the trend is up, all right? And tops are, are a process to create. Now let's get into a couple other ones, okay? This is the advanced decline cumulative line here. And we're looking at a couple sectors. I found this to be kind of interesting uh, because I'll tell you why. The, the strongest sectors is technology in the S&P 500 or the SPY, right? But consumer discretionary makes up a big piece of it and also communication services. So... I didn't bring up technology here because technology sector doesn't have these divergences. Okay, so that's totally fine. However, I want to call out a couple of things that I noticed. So consumer discretionary, you can see the advanced decline line, advanced decline percent line, and we have the cumulative on if you want to do this on stock charts yourself. You can see here it's putting in a lower high and heading lower. Meanwhile, the XLY, which is consumer discretionary, has been putting in a higher low or a higher high right here. So those two are diverging. It hasn't been doing it for long, but it's now been a month divergence taking place. All right. So what it's telling me is, okay, the, the sector's moving higher, but the internals are weakening. That's not a good sign. Now let's look at communication services. This is even a bigger divergence. Like this is pretty big. I look back through the history. I'm like, I don't really see anywhere this has happened before. Uh, so this to me is very interesting. So communication services, look at here since March. Higher lows, higher highs, just beautiful trend. Very bullish in the price action. 
But since March, look at the advanced decline line. I mean, dang. You know, that's putting in lower highs and lower lows. The overall long trend here is up, but you can see, I mean, tops are a process. And if this doesn't resolve itself to the upside, that would tell me that there could be very well more weakness ahead. Why? Why is that? Well, the market can't, the sector, I should say, can't continue pressing higher and higher and higher when its internals are continuing to bleed out. There comes a time where you need to get a reset. Now this is where it gets interesting. Utilities. Look at this. Utilities is defensive. It's a defensive play. And look what's been taking, uh, look what's been taking, what am I trying to say here? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Look what's been taking, I don't know, whatever. Somebody will leave it in the comments. <laughs> look what's been taking place. There we go. Oh, look what's been taking place here. Utilities is down here, right? It's been putting in, the price of utilities have been putting lower highs, lower lows. It's been trending down. The price action has been trending down. But the internals are strengthening. I mean, we're almost at a high here for the internals. So what's that telling us? That's a positive divergence. It hasn't played out in the price action yet, but if this does start playing out as a positive divergence and this continues to build up higher highs and higher lows, well, guess what? We'll probably see utilities start to strengthen as well. And if utilities strengthen and outperform the SPY, guess what? That means more defensive names are coming into play, which means there could be a rotation into defense, risk off, right? Hopefully this is all kind of coming together. I found that to be very interesting. Now it's also short term, but it's been going on for a few months. And if it's been going on for a few months, you don't want to just ignore it, okay? Let's look at NIMO. This is breath, breath. Now, now let's talk about more bullish perspectives. This is where people can get faked out a little bit. This to me is getting overextended to the downside, which tells me it's it's very possible to see a bounce. Yeah, um, strong oversold readings are like minus 80, but when it gets down to minus 62, that's pretty overextended. And you can see like these boom right here and right here, you saw these dips and then they got right, bought right back up, okay? Um, another thing to note though, I mean, look at all these peaks. Like, so this peak right here, that was an all-time high. Uh, this peak right here was an all-time high. And pretty much, yeah, this peak that we're seeing right here is a all-time high. But pay attention to what the readings tell you. While we were moving higher, breath was just continuing to deteriorate. As we pressed higher in the, sep uh, was this September? Yeah, September, that one was crazy. The internals, <laughs> they were bleeding out. This, to me, what's going on right now reminds me a lot more like September than it does to like the pandemic, right? It reminds me of this blow off move and then we had a 10% correction or so. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but it's something to pay attention to. All right, here's the nine mot. All right, this is uh, another just breath. Okay, it's the same thing. It's just calculated, the traditional calculation. The NYSE down here broke down through the trend, back tested the trend, which we talked about, and it started heading lower. However, the reading on the nine mot is also now getting to being overextended to the downside. So it's an area where you typically see bounces. All right. So we've got this reading down here at minus 175. Boom. We saw a move to the upside for, a, you know, a while there, you know, a few days and then it started to roll back over. Right here was a little bit more overextended. Boom. We moved up to the upside. Here was a pretty big overextension. Boom to the upside. All right. So we're getting a little bit uh, overextended to the downside. And it's happening very quick, right? If you look at the price action and you're looking at this reading and the reading's getting super overextended very quickly, that's not necessarily a bad thing from a bullish perspective because that just means, okay, that's all that took to get an overextended reading. Yeah, we'll probably bounce from here. But breakdowns also take place in these areas too, all right? So it's something that shouldn't be scoffed at and you should just pay note and then create a strategy that if there's this, if it's this hard to navigate the market, however, you're bullish because the price action's bullish, but you need to add a layer of cautiousness, you can scale back position sizing, 
scale back on your risk or if you're buying the dip maybe instead of buying at a you know a certain amount you you cut that amount in a smaller portion just in case and if you can you can always pyramid into it as you see more strength all right there's, there's so many different tactics like i said this isn't these aren't predictions at all this is me just sharing both bullish and bearish perspectives here here's another bullish thing the bpspx positive divergence boom the bp uh, chart here put in a lower hot lower low but yet the rsi has a higher low right here we've seen these type of divergences take place and they resolve really nicely to the upside rsi is oversold again which also represents a bounce point however what did we say about september and the area right around the pandemic time we said that watch out for an oversold reading to jump up and roll back over to go deeper that's what we saw here in september which says to me this there's a lot of things making this look like it's september all right but from a bullish perspective we're oversold we can get a bounce it's as easy as that however just watch for it to continue to head lower because breakdowns also happen at those readings uh, more internals that are diverging i won't spend too much time on this because i bring this chart up often it's very important and this is very important for any retail trader that's listening to this which is probably the bulk of viewers if you've been struggling making profits recently the reason why is because of this it's very hard to outperform the s p 500 as a retail trader especially if you don't understand hedging when you have internals just dragging lower and the markets pressing higher it, it becomes very very difficult when all the like individual stocks the bulk of them are tanking <laughs> but the s p 500 levitates higher so if you're having a hard time outperforming the market just know well you're working in a very difficult environment all right so nothing to be ashamed of just don't put yourself in a hole and then all of a sudden lever up to try to get out of the hole but then you get yourself in the hole deeper and then you start to unravel yourself and then you lead to a blown up account all right you don't want that here is more of a sentiment check let's take a look at what asset managers are doing and we'll look at the right x this to me um they backed off a little bit but it's still relatively you, you know euphoric i mean they're basically what it says here is last week they were you know guns of blazing over it was like around 90 percent or uh, above 90 percent reading on the asset managers you know that it tells me that okay they're not leveraged up but they're pretty much full bull mode right now a little bit of a back you know a little bit of a move down you could also call this a little divergence here right as the market's pressing higher the asset managers are backing off but it's still it's still relatively high and if you look at the right x i mean that is still full bull mode there too okay and this has just been full bull mode so that hasn't even uh, you know that uh, yeah we're at 0 0.08 i mean that's uh, all, all all okay it's just let's go long pretty much on everything right there okay let's look at the vix this is the 30 minute time frame for the vix pretty big move up right on a thursday guess what tomorrow it's friday will we get the vix crush friday probably <laughs> probably we have two gaps below us that can be filled and if we fill those gaps we can sometimes act as support and they can move higher a lot of the gaps in the vix they do get filled we still have two gaps above us which is the risk factor and if we get these filled that could present a very good opportunity to go long on individual stocks or the S&P 500 so we'll keep an eye out for that but as it stands right now what I did find interesting is I didn't do this but if you draw a trend line from up at this peak through this like diagonally boom like that this right here gapped way up it bounced from that trend line which I should have put that in and then it actually was defended but you can also look at it this peak it was once resistance boom it acted as support right at about 18 so 18 could be a key level to take a take take note in um if we start heading lower 18 might we might bounce again from those levels but also right around 16.52 as well let's look at a longer term time frame still within this technical pattern here this falling wedge a very just it's amazing how tight this is coiling up and how it's so well respected you can see here tag perfectly 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 two weeks in a row 
and now we're heading towards that top range again. So this, like I said, this can take a while, but it could also burst out at any moment. So be mindful of it. Take note that the RSI is curling slowly up as the as volatility has really just been kind of drifting lower. So if we start getting above 50, you know, those lead to quick spikes. We're not there yet, but you know, we might be. Let's look at some sectors and industries. Okay, transports, look at that. Gap down, smash down, bounced, and then fell back down. Look at, we've been watching the transports diverge from the S&P 500 for a while, from the uh, industrials here for a while too. That is an important divergence. Go read about Dow theory and why it's important to watch the transports and the industrials and what that means to the economy. Well, they've been completely getting just completely hammered here. If they don't start recovering, that's not a good sign. Can they still recover? We have a, almost a bullish cross over here on the 15 minute time frame. The RSI is showing some strength. Yeah, perhaps we can, but I did draw, draw out an area of resistance right here, this band at 14,750. It's right below all of this volume here, all this volume and this chop right here can act as a level of resistance. So be mindful of that. Five day moving average is flat to now declining as the days progress forward and the price actions below this will continue to decline, which puts pressure on the transports. Look at the banks. This is interesting to me. All right, this is getting interesting. So we're talked about 10 year yields. At the beginning, we talked about 30 year yields. We showed the TNX chart getting overextended to the downside. We showed TLH, which looks like it's getting overextended to the upside. Perhaps financials might be a play here. Maybe not right away, but it's getting there. Why? Why is that? Well, banks, banks do well when long-term yields go up. Why? Because banks borrow, or they, yeah, they borrow for the short term, they lend to the long term. When the yields rise, banks make more margin, more revenue, all right? What do I see here going on? First off, we're below the five-day moving average, so it's not in the greatest environment. It's also declining. That's also not the greatest, but what do we see here on the shorter time frame? RSI, positive divergence, and you also see a positive divergence taking place here in the PMO. So if we start seeing strength here and we start seeing the 10 year yield spike up higher or move higher or try to find its bottom, financials might perform, well, they might perform relatively flat, consolidate, or they might actually catch a bid here. So it's something to watch out for. Semiconductors, what do we say about semiconductors yesterday? Oof, ouch, right? Well, I said it on, not on a video, but on the Twitter feed where I did a market brief. So we had a big gap down, recovered slightly, headed lower, and then we you know, had a little bit of a shot up here towards the end of the day. Uh, price percent oscillator, bullish right now, but it's still below zero, heading higher. RSI, it's not quite above 50. We have this band of resistance. It's an area of, yeah, it was area of resistance, then support, 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 broke down, it acted as resistance. So right now it's gonna be a level of resistance to watch. We also have the five day declining moving average coming through that line too as well which can act as a level. Then we have all this volume profile up here too as well. So semiconductors now, they really have to do something going into tomorrow. You know, how's the week gonna end or is it gonna recover the following week? It's hard to say, but just note that once resistance is broken to them becomes a level of support, okay? So semiconductors make up a big portion of the NASDAQ composite. So if semis really start getting hit, 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 well, you can expect the indices to struggle, 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 struggle. Let's look at a couple commodities here as we wrap up the show. Gold, bullish crossover. We talked about that yesterday. However, you know, it was up, it was down slightly on the day. It was bullish more intraday. Still, this trend line is holding as a level of resistance. We're coming into that 26 day trading cycle that we learned about from Tom McClellan. Uh, you know, I could go either way right here. It's going to suggest a turning point. So maybe that's the turning point's a breakout or potentially that's a move lower. Uh, or, you know, sometimes it doesn't do anything. It's hard to say, but it's been pretty darn accurate since August. So I'm keeping an eye on it. And you can position yourself in a couple ways. You can play the breakout if it breaks out, or you can you can short it if it starts to head lower. I mean, it, if it's a turning point and it acts like a turning point again, just play the price action. For example, right here, okay, on this 26th day. Oh, you say, oh, you're coming up to the 26th day. Okay, well, I think potentially that it might, you know, roll over. Okay. Put on a short position. If it goes below that, you know, the previous couple of days candles, boom. Okay. Put on the short position. You won. Okay. Uh, or you thought maybe I think it's going to continue to go higher. Okay. 
Well, then put on a long position, a buy stop order above the previous high candle. And if it goes above it, cool, put that high on and then you can have a stop loss below. And if it, you know, if it didn't hit it, well, guess what? You never entered into the trade. You can have a plan for both scenarios and you could do the same thing here, okay? Like I said, it's not about predicting if it goes up or down. It's just having a strategy, having a plan. Silver does nothing. It's down slightly on the day here, half a percent. PMO is pretty much flatlined, still below zero. Um, bears have control at the moment because it's below these moving averages that are, you know, look like spaghetti lines now, just simply because it's been going sideways here since August of last year. All right, so we'll continue to watch and see and if anything new develops here. As it stands, nothing. Uh, copper, still struggling to break down through this down sloping trend line. Price percent oscillator is bullish. It is down now below the 100-day uh, moving average. We'll see here what copper can do, but as it stands right now, it's still struggling to break over it. I mean, it looks like through history, we can get a breakout, but keep in mind the PMO, it is below zero. Yes, it is crossing over, so that's good. And it's overall in bullish context. So my, my if, you know, if you're following price, this would look like it would be coming to break out here soon. However, if you have a position, you can always have a stop loss. Simple as that. I'm long-term bullish on copper. Um, that's just my outlook on copper, but I'm talking like, you know, I'm not short-term trading that I have position in. Um, a big mining, I'm not going to talk, disclose the position as of right now, but people that are in my Discord know it. I, I, it's it's down 10% or something like that. Um, I I mean, since I since I alerted it, it it's, it's one of those positions that I plan on holding for five years, maybe even longer, just because it's a long-term outlook play. And I've been buying in way, way before I even had the Discord on that specific stock too as well. This is oil. Oil showed some strength today. Energy sector showed a little bit of strength intraday too. This looks like a nice little hammer candle right at the 20 day moving average. The trend is bullish. I know that there's a bunch of stuff going on with the OPEC meeting. I don't have those details in front of me, but it seems to me that the outcome could resolve oil to continue to press higher. Uh, just by looking at the chart, that's what it looks like here to me too. You know. We'll, we'll, we'll watch it, we'll monitor it. You know, small pullback could resolve very much higher. I mean, just the context of this chart is just, if you're bearish this chart, I don't know why. I really don't. Um, uh, this is a healthy little pullback right here. I would imagine a healthier pullback could be back testing this previous breakout or even the 50 day moving average. So we'll continue to watch how this develops. The pullback right here was on declining volume. So perhaps that if we start moving higher, it'd be nice to see some in increasing volume. That'd be cool. Uh, price percent oscillator is crossed over to bearish, but it is above zero. So we'll see how that resolves itself too. It might take, it might need a few more days to kind of recoup or recover or decide if it wants to head lower. Let's look at the dollar really quick. Dollar broke out of its bull flag weakness today. You know, this inverse correlation between the dollar and the S&P 500 slightly broken or it's on a little bit of a delay. Right, this big move, yeah, we saw the S&P 500 move down lower, just like here, it's been putting in high, lower high, lower high, meanwhile, high, or sorry, low, higher low, and higher low. Rising wedge, falling wedge. We broke out, well, you know, it's consolidated here. Now we broke out stronger, and it hasn't really done anything since. We're still at all times high. So something to watch. But, you know, it's just so you know, it's just because it's been a perfect inverse correlation doesn't mean that correlations can't change right? It's something to pay attention to. If the dollar continues to press higher here, which I don't know if it will, um, that wouldn't be good for like gold, right? And we're coming into that 26 day. If this starts heading lower, you know, that 26 day to me, 26 trading, 26 trading day cycle on gold makes me think that, okay, maybe this is actually, we're coming up to the breakout point. So I don't know. And we're seeing a lot of bullish crossovers here on various miners too, that have just been getting slaughtered Oh my gosh, I don't have the chart of the GDXJ or the GDX, but in, in, in individual miners, but holy moly, you know, we're down you know, 0.11% in gold. We're slightly up yesterday and the miners have been getting sl just slaughtered, which says to me, there's a lot of upside potential if gold does want to track higher here because the miners, they'll have to play catch up. Now I've seen things where miners typically lead the price of gold. I've seen that. 
Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case here where, you know, they're just dragging lower and lower and that means gold's going to head lower too. It's a possibility. Um, but like I said, you can play both sides of the coin. You just need to be prepared for that, that happens. So let's wrap up and do a conclusion section. Okay, wrap up my thoughts because today was a longer video. First off, we, prevent, we presented bullish case scenarios being that one price action to um, how fast some of these indicators, right, got overextended to the downside. That's a pretty bullish thing to have price not even move down and yet these indicators are getting overextended. So that's bullish. We also presented the bearish case. We pointed out that there's this defense, you know, kind of brewing with like bonds rising higher. We have utilities, that advanced decline line showing strength, a positive divergence. All right. That's, that's, that's more defensive, right? A risk off. And then we have also the, what am I trying to say here? The, from bearish perspective, we have the divergences taking place that we pointed out. So a lot of different divergences. All right. Uh, other case that I want to point out here before closing out is this quarterly chart. The quarterly chart is obviously a very long-term chart, but just take note that we are outside of the upper Bollinger Band. And if you thought today was like, oh, whoa, you know, today was a shock. Geez, imagine if we just reconnected with the quarterly 5 EMA. And the quarterly 5 EMA is at 39.62. So like 4,000. Can you imagine if the S&P 500 dropped 320 points? My guess is if it did that, it'd be very quick. It would scare a lot of people. Retail traders will probably get burned by it. Like hardcore burned. All right. And would be too afraid to get back in. But if you're looking at this now and you see that, that that is a possibility because every time we get overextended, there has been something that happens. Actually, what's crazy, every red quarterly candle here, guess what? Guess who stepped in? The Fed. Go look. Go look at QE1, 2, 3, 4, ZERP. All of that was around red quarterly candles. We're a green candle right now, but I mean, dang, we're above the upper Bollinger Band. What? I... <laughs> Hey, but, but but to be all fair, the upper Bollinger Band in some charts now looks like an area of support. Complete distortions, right? Price action, like I said, very, very bullish. But just be just mindful of where you stand in all of this. All right? Just be mindful of it. Protect your capital. If you want to do this for the long term, just don't get greedy. Don't. Don't get greedy and don't get overconfident. Don't become complacent and don't feel like in a rush. There's going to be periods of time where you lose money, but guess what? There's going to be periods of time that if you stick to a strategy and you pay attention to risk, you're going to see your account move very, very quickly to the upside, but you need to be patient. And right now, it's a very difficult environment to navigate. That's all I've got for you. See you later.